all right thank you once again for joining us today at matoka tv studio all right um the video we're about to watch right now apostle me outside the video shocking secret that you bless your life so much whenever you see yourself preaching or healing in a dream apostle me outside the video shocking meaning of concerning that dream and i show you this clip you bless your life so much all right over to you sir how many of you have had this experience like myself you you've seen yourself casting out devils doing mighty things in your dreams and then you wake up and say wow have you seen that before like me because i see things okay you've never seen that before so the way to identify if you have ever had that experience that symptom in your life is you, you see yourself doing great things you just come to places and things just break you know what that's true but it's in another dimension that's why it's, it's incongruous with your current reality that's the reason for which we need to move Oh, you may not have heard my story. I was born a stammerer and I was very bad in stammering. No one could hear what I had to say. A little bit intelligent, but I could not speak. I was next to dumb. There was a dimension in God I came into. I received utterance. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you. What you call your limitation is your dimension. <laughs> it lingers just because of the dimension that you are. If you migrate... Some of those things will give way. Even some battles you fight, you know, some kind of things. They set, Satan has a ground in, in, around your life. There was something in the family context and all of that. You can migrate to another dimension where that context is no longer applicable. Have you heard of mounting up with wings like eagles? It means you have gone beyond snakes and crocodiles. Dimension. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you became a believer. And that's not, that's not, oh yeah? Okay. You gave your life to Christ, you became a believer. It means, the, the, the implication is that you have entered into a, a system that you can only function in by faith. It's a system. The Bible says that he that cometh to God must believe that he is that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. So the basic operating modality within the context that you have found yourself is the believing attitude. Uh, if you know that that's true, there are certain things you need to do that is, uh, that is designed to enhance your believing. For instance, I don't like attending burials. It does something bad to me. So I can pay for the burial, pay for the casket, pay for everything. Well, I'll, I'll not come. Because it affects my believing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It may not affect yours. If, if you know that this thing we are doing depends on your believing, you will now begin to find out the things that, that affect your believing. And you will ensure that you stay clear of them. I don't eat shrimps, for instance. I'm allergic to it. So if I eat shrimps, I will just start vomiting. In fact, another prayer point will be generated instantly. <laughs> So I stay away from it. I'm allergic to it. So it's, it's, it's a believing war. So anything that will fight your believing, you fight it. Or you stay clear of it. If you can afford it. Right? There is an economy of grace that you, you experience within the context of your believing life. When you begin to believe and begin to walk with him, you now migrate to become a disciple. When you decide to continue in his word. You see, Jesus, the Bible says, Jesus was speaking to the Jews that believed on him. He said, if you continue in my word, he was speaking to believers. So that lecture was for believers, not for unbelievers. If you continue in my word, then shall he be my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall no make you free. It makes free, not sets free. I don't have time for that. You see, so those believers that decide to continue in his word enter into a different ecosystem. They become disciples. And the hope of a disciple is that he gets to know the truth. The truth is not a statement of fact, it's a substance of reality. It is something that is revealed to you. It's, it's, it's not available. Oh my God. You, it's revealed. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Once upon a time, um, God revealed healing to me. Healing. And when I, I knew healing, I, I, 
I, I realized that there was no sickness that was so strong that healing cannot take it away. You, there are things you will now know by revelation, not by study. You, you continued in the word, that's your entry ticket into knowing the reality. So, your, your, your life on the status of a believer is an ecosystem. And then your life when you become a disciple with the possibility of knowing the truth is another ecosystem. It's another dimension of entirely. And the way God relates with the two individuals is on a different level. You choose where you want to be. Exactly. Then when you begin to function as a disciple, there, there are several things in God you cannot do except you have been discipled to do it. One of which is service. Now service to the government is different from service to God. And there are so many things that apply in your office that don't apply to service. Maybe the biggest guy in the office is the one that hires and fires. But in the kingdom, the biggest guy is the one that serves. So it is not the same with the experience you've had in the world. And you need to be educated in order for you to be able to serve God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 28, it says, seeing that we have received a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably. There's a dimension of grace that is beyond the grace that saved you, that you need to have. It is on the strength of that grace that you can serve God acceptably. And then he gave us an insight into what acceptable service is in reverence and in godly fear. <laughs> you know why? Because our God, the Bible says, is a consuming fire. And what does that mean? Is he talking about hell? No. He said our God is fire. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Stay. 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 Do you still remember when Jesus appeared on the Isle of Patmos to John and John was trying to give us a description of who Jesus was? His eyes were like a flame of fire. Say, remember that? Good. When God comes to judge our works, the package of each man's work will be the same dimension but when you bring it and place it on the platform uh, if jesus comes and he looks at it it is only that which exists within his perspective jesus's perspective that will survive the fire so every other thing you did which was your good idea your own preference your own strategy your own stuff it will survive that fire he said, because of that, you will need to have grace so that you can serve God acceptably. And if you are on the train of acceptable service, there is going to be an infiltration of reverence on your heart. Because I can be preaching to a large congregation and, some, and somewhere along the line, God now registers his displeasure with a comment that I made. Uh, they might be healing me, but when I, I know I failed, so I will go back and beg. And sometimes I can beg for two days. Then he said, all right. Don't preach for the next two weeks. Just study my word and pray. For a statement I made on the pulpit that is not supposed to be a very big thing, but in the eyes of God, the one that has the eyes that can evaluate, he said, that matter has put you off the pulpit for two weeks. Oh, many of us do not make Jesus our first audience. So we are into relativism. How does it look from human perspective? You will be shocked. He said, let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably. In reverence and in godly fear. Because our God. So when you, when you feel his, when you perceive his, his, um, his, his, his pain, you stop. Some other time you might even feel that you did not expose the scripture the way you, you knew it in your study room and you are feeling sad and he's excited. For our God. So service is a tightrope walk. He said, let us have grace. Because any form of service you did unto God that was outside of grace, when he that evaluates with the eyes of fire comes, it's open. So when you become a servant, Becoming a servant is supposed to be the result of being a disciple. A servant that has known the truth. There's nothing you throw at him. There's no economic situation. There's no COVID-19 restriction. There's no pressure you put on him that he would change his mind about Jesus Christ. Because he was a disciple. If you are still in that 
ecosystem, that civilization, where little pressure can make you change your convictions, you are not living, you are existing. You are not, you are not hooked on what is eternal. The shakings of this time will affect you. You know, you know, I said, I'm, I'm from the wilderness. And my, own, my own tongue is strong. It's, so just forgive me beforehand. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> And then when you have labored as a servant faithfully, you understand the desires of your master. Then he begins to unveil his will to you. That's when you become a friend. Just, just stay, just stay, stay, please. You become what? A friend. Because Jesus said that there is no servant of his that knows the will of his father. But you, you have known the will of my father, so I no longer call you servants. I call you... And that's a different ecosystem entirely. You are just sleeping. It's not as if you were doing anything. Then he shows up in your dream and takes you on a journey. And he shows you this person. Shows you this person. So, so this one is going to betray you in the next two weeks. That one will. Ah, this one has your heart. Meanwhile, in the natural, it, it doesn't look obvious because he's your friend. And that's why when we go into the teaching on prayer, are you still here? When we go into the teaching on prayer, there, there is a dimension of prayer you pray and the circumference of that prayer captures God as Father. There's a dimension of prayer you pray, the circumference of that prayer captures God as, as friend. There's a way to pray to God as a friend. If God is not your friend, you can't activate that possibility. There's a way to pray to God as a judge. That's the reason for Luke chapter 8, verse 1 to 18. Okay, let's, let's, let's not... Uh, Let's leave it there. So this migration, I want to migrate from one dimension into another dimension. The first requirement is, is what um, the scripture that pastor has been reading from the book of Joshua holds. It says, sanctify yourself today and tomorrow. That's Joshua chapter 3 verse 5. Because I want to do wonders among you. Alright? There's a new regime of dealings that I want to bring into your space. But you will need to sanctify yourself. So the first requirement of moving into a new dimension is what we call consecration to God. Consecration. A man that is not consecrated is going to use God to serve his purposes. But a man that is consecrated, God will use him to serve his purposes. You might think, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you aware that there are many preachers that are using God? You just know that that's what he's doing. The reason is because he's not consecrated. So God is available for him to exploit. He uses God to achieve his own goals. It is, it is at the end you will find out that he wasted not his time, he wasted his life. And every other unfortunate person that followed him became a victim of, of that waste. May the, Lord, may the Lord help us in the name of Jesus. If, if we were only pastors, if we were only pastors, I would have mentioned some names. Yeah. Have you seen this, this example? This is a prototype of waste. consecration there are two chapters of the bible romans chapter 6 and romans chapter 12 that 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 capture the doctrine of consecration in the new testament and in the book of luke chapter uh, leviticus chapter 8 leviticus chapter 8 in the old testament romans chapter 6 and romans chapter 12 captures the doctrine of consecration let me read the scripture to us quickly and the scripture of interest will be from the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1. He said, I beseech you brethren. Huh? Are you there? Romans chapter 12 verse 1. Where's my, yes. my yes. sister? Are you there? Yes. Alright. Alright. Yeah? I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that you present now, your there, bodies. There. There's, there's something that you are likely to miss if you just listen to the good reading. Notice that he's beseeching us by the mercy of God. Why? There are five, there were five sacrifices in the book of Leviticus that Moses instructed that must be offered. Two are compulsory, three are voluntary. First is the sin offering, second is the trespass offering, third is the bond offering, fourth is the peace offering, and five, the meat offering. I, I know you know that um, Jesus is our sin offering. And the trespass offering is the kind of offering you give when you have committed an infringement against God. The trespass offering is the offering you, you, you bring when you commit an infringement against the law. 
when you offend God is a trespass offering. The possibility of being able to confess with a broken and a contrite heart. Right? Then we have the bond offering. The bond offering happens to be consecration. And consecration is not compulsory. You might decide not to consecrate yourself. It means you are going to be a believer that is useless to God. You are just existing. Yes, you are saved. There's nothing. No doubt you are saved. But you are of no use to his kingdom. You are just using God to achieve your own thing. You are isolated from God's heart. So when you now decide, that's why he's begging us. By the mercy of God, it's the right thing to do. To consecrate yourself. I married from the Yoruba tribe in Nigeria. And part of what is required when you marry from the Yoruba is that you will need to do something called the Obale. Meanwhile, we are from the royal breed in my own conclave. And we don't we don't Obale. Obale is not accepted. So uh, it was a great uh, challenge. But we eventually yielded. When they gave me the lease to get the items for the bride price, it was written in Yoruba language. The first need I had was to get an interpreter. <laughs> On the list was a certain kind of fish that was not in our waters. <laughs> I had to travel to Ilori. And when we brought all the items and put on the field, it was a mountain. It was when I married I realized there was something I didn't pay for my wife's love but if she's reasonable having seen the trouble I went through <laughs> to get those items she's supposed to give me for free that's what Paul is saying that I beseech you Jesus paid for your, your bride price was his blood now I beseech you to be reasonable that if he has paid this price you are supposed to give him your love for free to present your bodies who are you working for working for jesus or you are just using jesus to achieve what you want if we check your prayer list the most predominant prayer list in this place which is legitimate door is marriage but you did not come to earth to get married that's not why you're here when your life begins to serve that good that is on the heart of god then that's when you experience what is called prosperity. In prosperity, the, the things that the Gentiles are seeking for, they navigate in your direction. The Bible says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. And the things the Gentiles seek will navigate. You don't seek it. And I can tell you, I've walked on that path. I was a senior officer in the oil industry. Without a car. Not because every salary I took, every month, I could buy cars every month. I was not poor, but he would not have me buy a car for seven years. Learn how to operate without a vehicle. And in the process, he will learn of me. My colleagues called me a Jew. I was outside of the box. I couldn't fit into any, any team. Because when I come, I come with my own philosophy. And I'm so bold that you can't change me. I have a pact with Jesus and I'm not hiding it. A lot of persecution I had to suffer because of my position. But you know what? I knew the job. <laughs> if you want to get the job done, you need to find me. But if you want to play politics, I'm bad at that because I have a master. I have a master. And all I do is to serve his will. Consecration. It's going to make you God's man. Your, your preference, your scale of preference, your prayer list, everything is going to change. Because life in consecration is different. He gives you what you pray about even though your needs are obvious. And for a long time, he may not even give you the opportunity to pray for your needs. I, I know you don't know that life. Oh, you never shift. You never shift into dimensions. If you are not a consecrated entity. Meanwhile, you can live in another ecosystem that is a vast to his government. It's possible. But if you want to play according to the script, consecration is not a choice. 
I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God. Do you know in the oil industry when they send you, because we were regulators, I was a regulator. So we, I was a supervisor once at Beachland. All the depots at Beachland was under my control. If I wanted to make money, I would have bought comas, right? Every month, once every month for, for four years. I would have gone home with a gym text bag of dollars five times a month for four years. But I had no car. So you can't even negotiate with me because you don't even know which island I am. What my preference was because they knew I had the money to buy a car. But I was not mine anymore. And my master would say, you walk on foot. And I, I was like that for seven years. And when the guys see that they cannot manipulate you with money, they will bring women around you. I'm talking about women that look like they just brought them out of a leather bag. <laughs> Brand new from the factory. When that one didn't work, then they say, I'm a member of a cult. I, um, I serve something. Something very dark. I'm a wicked man. <laughs> if the world has not yet given you a name, you have not been obvious. I was in the heart of corruption. But you will not do that close to my table. I lost promotions. I lost upliftments. Trainings. I was supposed to go abroad to Houston. What they'll do is this. They'll, they'll program me two weeks before the training so that I cannot go to the U.S. Embassy to get a visa. And they did that three times. Your own stuff will not just work. But for every other person it will work. And I was not sad because I knew where I was. I was not of this world. There is one that brags about me. His name is Jesus. When it was obvious after seven years that what you seek is not your glory, not your comfort, not your... Then God put something on me. And the thing he put on me brings cars. So I don't need to buy cars anymore. They come. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If I pray here in the name of Jesus, something will happen. But I was in the wilderness for a very long time. My time in the cave was too long. Ministers of the gospel looked at me and pitied me. That is your own part. It's not. It's a strange part. The only person that felt I was a champion was my wife. In her eyes, I didn't need to fight to be a champion. Let Jesus give you a name. Don't make one for yourself. The second requirement is faithfulness. If we check your diary, the things that he said to you 12 years ago, 15 years ago, are you still there? Or you've decided to change your job description. I was an usher, pastor, at the door. I was the one that welcomes people in. I started operating the gift of prophecy there, but my designation was at the door. And there I was. It was still at the door. Jesus came and he touched me. I was I was there at the door. Oh, if if you if you say if you deploy me now to the ushering department, you will see how effective I can be because I was there. I, that's my place. We prayed on seats for people that will come. That when anybody sits here, he will be changed. We we developed an intercessory ministry from ushering. Developed all kinds of stuff just ushering, and people didn't know why they had encounters. We held night vigils or touching seats that our pastor never knew about and in fact the time he discovered we were praying for him he stopped us said, this, this kind of prayer <laughs> stop stop this prayer what's, what's that he stopped us meanwhile we had prayed for him for seven years wow. I was at the door I never knew I was a preacher I was going to be a preacher and I did not desire to be a preacher I just love Jesus today we add breakthrough to our love do this and I will love you. Do that and I will love you. It's like you use a Japanese calculator to, to, to interpolate. This is how they curve. Oh, you don't know that God is even better than you. He loves you more than you love yourself. <laughs>